Have you ever wondered why, despite trying everything low-carb diets, low-fat meals, intermittent fasting, hours of running your belly fat still clings to you like a fortified layer that refuses to leave? If it feels unfair, your body would tell you it's simply protecting you. Belly fat is not meaningless excess, biologically. It functions as a protective bunker, a reserve of energy your body guards when it senses any threat. And when your hormones are out of balance, especially insulin and cortisol, that bunker becomes nearly impenetrable. The uncomfortable truth is that many people can't lose belly fat not because they lack discipline, but because their bodies won't allow it. Even slightly elevated insulin can shut off fat burning instantly. Elevated cortisol signals danger, and survival becomes more important than your desire for a smaller waistline. In that state, you can train harder, count every calorie, push yourself relentlessly, yet your belly fat remains untouched because your body is stuck in preserve to survive mode. What most people don't realize is that belly fat only begins to unlock when two conditions are met. Insulin must stay low long enough and stress must drop deep enough. Only then does your body shift from protect to release. And this has nothing to do with crunches, long runs, or detox juices. It happens when your biological rhythm is aligned properly. So, if you've ever said, I've done everything and my belly still won't shrink, the real reason may be simple. You haven't reset the hormones that allow your body to open the door to true fat burning. When you look at your belly and wonder why it refuses to shrink despite trying multiple diets, the first thing you need to understand is that your body does not view belly fat the way you do. Belly fat is not the enemy in its eyes. It is a reserve bank, a protective shield around vital organs, a strategic energy bunker meant to keep you alive in times of uncertainty. So in any situation where the body senses instability, it will hold on to belly fat at all costs. That is why even when you cut carbs, lower fat intake, or follow strict meal plans. The fat around your stomach often feels like it is more stubborn than anything else. What makes belly fat so difficult to lose lies deep within your hormonal signals, not in the number of calories you eat. Two hormones, in particular, control almost the entire game, insulin and cortisol. Insulin is the lock on your fat storage vault. When insulin is high, the vault is sealed. Any excess energy gets stored as fat, and the fat you already have becomes inaccessible. And insulin rises not only from sugar or carbs, eating too frequently, snacking between meals, or consuming drinks that seem harmless can all trigger an insulin response and shut off fat burning. This is why you can train hard every day and still see no change in your stomach. Your hormones aren't permitting it. Cortisol plays an equally powerful but different role. It is the body's stress signal. But stress does not only mean anxiety or emotional tension, lack of sleep, eating too little, over-exercising, working late, or living under constant pressure all elevate cortisol. When cortisol is high, the body protects belly fat even more because it perceives stress as a survival threat. This mechanism once kept our ancestors alive, but today it is the reason belly fat stays longer than fat in any other area. This is why methods such as crunches, long cardio sessions, strict calorie cutting, or extreme fasting do not defeat belly fat. You cannot force your body to burn belly fat while it believes you are in danger. You can only convince it to release fat when the hormonal environment shifts from protect to allow. This shift begins inside your cells, not in the gym. When insulin remains low long enough, your fat cells finally unlock and allow lipase enzymes to break down stored fat. But for insulin to drop, it is not enough to simply reduce sugar. You must also create windows of time without food long enough for insulin to fall naturally. This is why intermittent fasting works not because it is magical but because it gives insulin the space it needs to decrease. The problem is that most people have never fasted long enough to enter true fat-burning mode, or they unintentionally break their fast with something small that spikes insulin again. 
But low insulin alone is not enough. Your body must also believe you are not under threat. You can fast correctly, but if your sleep is poor or your stress levels are high, cortisol will lock belly fat in place as a protective strategy. This is why many people who fast consistently still cannot lose belly fat. They only addressed half the problem. The body needs both low insulin and low cortisol to transition into true fat burning mode. When these two conditions align, the body finally grants you access to belly fat. But even then, it won't start burning belly fat first. It begins with visceral fat, the fat around your organs, because that fat is metabolically active and more dangerous. Visceral fat decreases long before you notice any change in your waistline. That is why many people feel lighter, have better digestion, or notice improved blood sugar, even though their stomach looks the same. Only after visceral fat drops does the body shift to burning subcutaneous fat, the belly fat, you can see in the mirror. This is the crucial transition most people don't know exists. They assume their diet isn't working because their waist hasn't changed yet. When in reality, the body is doing exactly what it is supposed to do, just in a different order than they expect. When you understand the sequence, you stop feeling defeated when your belly doesn't shrink immediately. You recognize that your body has its own logic and needs time before it reaches the stage you want most burning belly fat for real. Once you understand that belly fat only begins to change when your hormones change, you begin to see that the most important factor in fat loss is not how much you eat, but the hormonal state your body is operating in. Your body burns fat, not because you want it to weigh, but because it believes doing so is safe. And for your body to believe this, it must enter a biological state where insulin is low, cortisol is steady, and fat cells are ready to open. The unfortunate truth is that most people never reach this hormonal state, no matter how hard they try. Most people make the first mistake immediately. They think calories are the deciding factor. And while calories matter, they only matter when your hormones allow them to matter. If insulin is high, your body will store fat even when you eat very little. If cortisol is high, your body will prioritize storing belly fat even if you cut sugar and exercise daily. This explains why some people gain fat while eating less and others lose fat eating more. The difference is not discipline. The difference is hormonal environment. When insulin drops, your body can finally access fat stores. But for insulin to fall significantly, you need more than sugar reduction. You need long enough gaps between meals for insulin to naturally decline. This is why fasting becomes a powerful tool. When you avoid calorie intake long enough, 12 to 14 hours or more, insulin enters a low zone. And in that low zone, your body begins burning fat for the first time, especially visceral fat, because it poses the greatest metabolic risk. But during this stage, Many people unknowingly sabotage their progress with things that seem small, but are not small at all. A sip of latte, a scoop of BCAAs, a glass of juice, or even a splash of milk in morning coffee, each one spikes insulin. And a single insulin spike can shut down fat, burning instantly. This is why so many people fast without ever actually burning fat. They think they are fasting, but their hormones say otherwise. Cortisol is another essential piece of the puzzle. You can eat correctly, lower sugar correctly, fast correctly, and still fail to lose belly fat if your stress levels are high. Overworking, undersleeping, emotional strain, overtraining, and constant pressure keep cortisol elevated. When cortisol stays high, the body shifts into preservation mode, a biological state where fat burning slows dramatically. Even if visceral fat is decreasing, subcutaneous belly fat will not change. Your body is not wrong. It is simply responding to the signal that you are under threat. Sleep is one of the most underestimated components of belly fat loss. Adequate sleep doesn't just lower cortisol. It increases the sensitivity of fat cells to hormonal signals. During deep sleep, your body produces growth hormone, which supports fat breakdown and helps preserve muscle. When you sleep only five or six hours, growth hormone drops sharply and fat burning capacity collapses. 
This explains why someone can fast properly, eat clean, train intensely, and still watch their belly expand after a few nights of poor sleep. Fat loss cannot coexist with an exhausted body. At the cellular level, belly fat is stubborn because its biological structure differs from fat in other regions. It contains fewer hormone receptors, meaning it responds more slowly to fat-burning signals. This is why your arms, legs, or back may slim down first while your belly remains unchanged. It's not that belly fat isn't decreasing, it's just the last in line. The body always burns the easiest fat first, then the most dangerous fat, and finally the protective fat. Eating frequency is another major factor. The body does not like being fed all day. Every time you eat, insulin rises. If you eat three meals plus four snacks, you've increased insulin seven times in one day, preventing your body from ever entering fat-burning mode. Every snack, no matter how small, is a biological instruction. This is why people who eat three structured meals without snacking often lose fat more effectively than those who eat small amounts all day long. Meanwhile, many people try to burn belly fat with long cardio sessions, but they overlook the most important truth, fat loss, is not driven by the hours you spend exercising, but by the hormonal state you maintain throughout the day. Cardio burns calories, but does not significantly alter insulin. You can run five kilometers, but if insulin is high, your body will not touch belly fat. Exercise is only a catalyst when hormones are already in the correct state. Your body is far more intelligent than you think. It will never release fat unless it trusts that you are safe. When insulin is low, Cortisol is stable, sleep is adequate, and no alarm signals are present. The body naturally opens its fat stores. But if even one of these factors is off, the entire process can halt. This is why belly fat loss is not a change that happens in days, but a biological transformation that requires consistent, aligned decisions over many weeks. Once you understand how your body prioritizes fat, you realize that every successful fat loss method revolves around the same principle bringing your body back into a state of safety. And when your body feels safe, even the most stubborn belly fat, the final reserve, will eventually melt away. Once you understand that the body only burns belly fat when it receives a safety signal from its hormones, you begin to see why so many people fail. They try to shrink their waistline without changing their biological environment. They work hard, restrict food, push themselves daily, yet their belly fat stays exactly the same because their body doesn't believe the time is right. And the most important truth is this belly fat does not respond to effort, it responds to signals. When insulin remains low and cortisol stays stable for long enough, the body slowly exits survival mode. This is when many people say they feel like the body is finally cooperating. You feel lighter, clearer, less hungry, less reliant on sugar. None of this is psychological, it's biology shifting. Fat cells begin loosening their stored energy. Fat burning enzymes become more active and the liver increases metabolic processing. And this is the stage when the body finally allows access to the fat you've wanted to lose for years, subcutaneous belly fat. Interestingly, when this process begins, it often moves quietly. You don't see your belly shrink overnight, oh my sorry. But then, suddenly, after several weeks of consistent hormonal alignment, you look in the mirror and notice your waist is more defined. Old pants fit differently. Your midsection feels lighter even if your workouts haven't changed. That's because the body has finished its internal preparation and is now finally targeting the last fat reserve. However, this is also the stage where a single mistake can push you backward. A week of poor sleep, irregular eating, Heightened stress or overtraining can spike cortisol dramatically. And when cortisol rises, the body immediately closes the door on belly fat burning. Many people experience the belly rebound, not because they overate, but because their body slipped back into defense mode. This reveals a crucial truth. Belly fat loss is not a one-time achievement. It is a biological state, and that state depends on how you live each day. When you understand that belly fat responds to safety, not struggle, your entire approach changes. 
you realize that sleeping an extra hour can sometimes be more valuable than an intense workout. You begin to see that eating at the right times matters more than eating less. You notice that a calm, low-stress day can trigger more fat loss than any calorie-cutting strategy, and most importantly, you stop fighting your body. In the end, what makes belly fat loss so challenging is not the fat itself, but the modern lifestyle that constantly disrupts hormonal balance. But when you realign your lifestyle eating within a consistent window, avoiding snacks, sleeping deeply, managing stress, and training moderately, the body naturally knows what to do. It burns fat in the correct order, visceral first, subcutaneous second, and when the time is right, belly fat disappears as a biological consequence, not as something you force. The good news is, this your body has never been against you. It has always been protecting you. And once you learn to send it the right signals, your waistline will begin to change in the most natural way possible. If you've tried everything and your belly fat still refuses to change, remember this, the problem isn't your willpower. It's the signals your body is receiving. When you balance your hormones, reduce frequent snacking, extend your fasting window, sleep deeply, and lower stress. Your body naturally switches into fat-burning mode. You don't need to push yourself to exhaustion. You only need to create the biological environment that tells your body it is safe enough to release belly fat. If you'd like more videos on hormone reset, proper fasting techniques, or optimizing sleep to accelerate fat loss, leave a comment below. I'll see you in the next video.